I am Dr. Kanchan Kaur, Director of Breast Surgery at Medanta, the Medicity Hospital in Gurgaon. Today I shall be talking a little bit about breast cancer, the treatments that patients who, are, who have been diagnosed with breast cancer undergo and also factors related to recurrence which is one of the biggest fears that anybody diagnosed with cancer has is that the cancer will come back. So we will talk a little bit about that. So talking about diagnosis and treatment of breast cancer, breast cancer can be diagnosed in two settings. One is obviously when the patient feels a symptom. The symptom could be a lump, generally a painless lump, any discharge from the nipple, nipple getting pulled inwards, any change in the shape and size of the breast. These are the symptoms that a patient may feel and they may come to the doctor for further evaluation. The second setting in which breast cancer is diagnosed is called the screening setting. Screening means that the patient has no symptoms whatsoever. As a routine, as part of general health check, they come and get a mammogram and the mammogram detects a very tiny lesion in the breast which when we diagnose turns out to be a cancer. So these are the two settings in which a cancer is diagnosed in the breast. Most patients will need a combination of mammogram, ultrasound and MRI to diagnose the local extent of the disease, which means how many cancers are there in the breast, is there just one cancer, is there more than one cancer, is the other breast okay, are lymph nodes in the armpit okay. So all these tests help us to determine the local extent of the disease. A needle biopsy is always done to confirm the diagnosis of cancer and also certain tests are performed on the needle biopsy to find out the nature of the disease. It is very important for us to know this because treatment planning depends on what the local extent of the disease is and what the nature of the disease is. For a lot of patients, we also need to do whole body staging in the form of doing a PET CT scan. Now generally, if patients have come very early, especially in the screening setting, a PET CT scan may not be needed. But for patients who come with advanced disease, we do need to do a PET CT scan to find out the stage of the disease, which means is it limited to the breast or has it traveled beyond the breast. Now once we have done the full local staging and the whole body staging, and we know what the nature of the disease is, then treatment planning is done. There are four things which are needed to treat breast cancer and most patients will need more than one of these. These are surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy and hormonal blockade tablets. So depending on the stage of the disease, depending on the nature of the disease, a combination of these treatments is used to treat the patient. Also, when patients who are young in age present with breast cancer, there are other things that we discuss with them. This includes preservation of fertility because breast cancer treatments, especially chemotherapy and hormonal blockade therapy, may lead the patient infertile. And for younger girls diagnosed with breast cancer, there are really good methods available now to preserve their fertility so that at the end of their cancer treatments, they can, if they wish, go on with motherhood and have a baby. Also, for younger patients and for other patients who have a family history of breast cancer, we do talk about certain special tests called gene tests, which help us to determine whether the patient is at a higher risk of developing more breast cancer in the other breast or developing cancer in other organs of the body like the ovaries. And basis these tests, then certain risk reduction methods can be employed. Whenever someone is diagnosed with breast cancer, the biggest fear that everybody has is that after undergoing the extensive treatments, will the cancer come back or will I always be cancer free? Now the nature of the disease is such that even if we have managed to achieve really good results from initial treatments, that little risk of the disease coming back always remains. The disease can come back in the same breast if we have saved the breast. It can come back in the other breast. It can come back anywhere else in the body. So how do we determine who is at a higher risk and what can we do to reduce this risk of recurrence? 
Now, generally speaking, when breast cancer is diagnosed in a younger patient, especially under the age of 40, the lifetime risk of the cancer coming back is slightly higher than somebody who's diagnosed, say, in their 60s or in their 70s. Also, if you have a very strong family history of breast cancer, or we have already tested for the gene, which is the breast cancer gene, and you are positive for the breast cancer gene, then the risk of the disease coming back is as high as 80% in a normal breast. So these are the factors that help us to tailor what we can do to reduce the risk of recurrence in such patients. Also, there are certain patients who have different types of a breast cancer, which we call lobular breast cancer. The chance of such a cancer occurring again in the other breast is slightly higher than those who have the normal type of breast cancer, which we call invasive ductal carcinoma. Also, certain very aggressive forms of breast cancers, the triple negatives or the ones which are HER2 new positive, are known to carry a higher risk of coming back in other parts of the body. That is why every patient who gets treated for breast cancer, irrespective of stage at which they were diagnosed, is kept on a tailored follow-up program, which could be three-monthly, six-monthly, annually, in which we do tests for the breast, we do tests for the other parts of the body and determine whether the disease is coming back and God forbid that it does, it is picked up at an early stage. I'd like to take some time here to talk about the fear of recurrence in the same or the other breast, which is one of the biggest fears the patients have. Now, if a patient has been diagnosed with early breast cancer in one breast, then it is very, very, very safe to save the breast provided your doctor has done all tests to confirm that it is safe for you to have a breast saving surgery that you have had the mandatory radiotherapy to that breast and also had other treatments like hormonal blockade treatments or targeted chemotherapy which we know reduce the risk of the disease coming back. A lot of patients have this fear that if I save my breast, the cancer will certainly come back in that breast. That is unfounded because nowadays we will only select those patients who are suitable for such a surgery and recommend such a surgery for them. So it is safe to save the breast. Now coming to the other breast, it is always a knee-jerk reaction. When we give a diagnosis of breast cancer, a lot of women will turn around and say, doctor, please remove both my breasts. I'm worried it will come back. Now I would like to reassure anybody who is listening to this that yes, the risk of the cancer coming in the other breast is about two to six fold higher, but a lot of patients will undergo some form of preventive therapy in the form of hormonal blockade treatment, which about 70% patients who have hormone sensitive cancer will get. And this is known to reduce the risk of the disease coming back in the other breast. So unless there is a very strong family history, unless there are high risk lesions in the other breast, or unless you are positive for the gene that increases your risk of developing breast cancer, there is no medical benefit of removing the normal breast in case you have cancer in one breast. So when we talk of preventive measures, prevention to reduce the risk of recurrence, we have to understand that your doctor will help you tailor what is best for you. What works for one patient may not work for the other patient. And this is one thing that we have to understand because a lot of patients will come and say, but the other patient had this and I didn't have this and then it increases their fear. So understand, talk to your doctor. There are medical ways to reduce risk of recurrence and there are surgical ways to reduce risk of recurrence. Medical ways are hormonal blockade tablets. In some patients, we need to give targeted chemotherapy, which is those patients who are HER2 new positive. This is known to reduce the risk of recurrence. And in patients in whom there is a high family history risk, or young patients who are diagnosed with hormone sensitive cancers, removing the ovaries or a surgical removal of both the ovaries is known to also reduce the risk of the disease coming back. Remember, for anybody who has been diagnosed with breast cancer, the fact that they are on regular follow-up, if the cancer ever comes back, is invariably picked up at such an early stage that treatments are successful. So don't be scared of recurrence because there are ways and means to prevent it. 
there are ways and means to diagnose it in time and there are definite ways and means to treat it. No talk about cancer and especially breast cancer is complete unless we talk about lifestyle because cancer at the end of the day is a lifestyle disease and especially so for breast cancer. Other than the fact in patients who already have a gene problem, we don't know why breast cancer happens. But we do know for sure that this is a lifestyle disease. It is known to happen more in more industrialized cities and countries and that could do with the lifestyle options that patients or women opt. So the lifestyle choices that women need to make, if possible, try to have your babies in time. Most certainly breastfeed them for as long as you can. This gives huge protection and reduces risk of breast cancer. Then there are other generalized factors that play a very important role. The diet that you eat. It is so important for us to understand that the more we get into eating processed foods, packaged foods, the more we increase the risk of disease and definitely increase the risk of cancer. Try to eat what is seasonal, what is local and eat fresh. Once in a while, convenience eating out of a package may be okay, but you should try to eat as much fresh as you can. Try to have 20 to 30% of your diet in a day which is raw, raw in the form of salads and in the form of fruits. Now we know that there is a lot of insecticide and pesticide being used by the agricultural community nowadays and these insecticides and pesticides go into our body, they mimic the female hormone, cause endocrine disruption and increase risk of breast cancer. Now it is very difficult to get into the debate of organic farming but yes, if you can source food that is either residue free, which hasn't, be treat, hasn't been treated too much with chemicals, it's healthier for you to eat that. Always wash your fruit and vegetables or dip them in water which has either soda bicarb, vinegar or salt for at least half an hour to an hour before you consume them. It's very important to understand that these small changes that we make go a very long way in reducing our risk of cancer. Also, the utensils that you use for cooking. Try to stay away from plastics. Plastics leach chemicals into your food which can be harmful. It's good to cook in iron vessels, it's good to cook in steel, use glass. In fact, you know, if you try to adopt the lifestyle that your grandmother had, it will go a long way in reducing your risk of developing cancer. I would most certainly like to point out here that with more industrialization and the uh, women becoming more and more modern in their lifestyle we have taken to drinking and alcohol is definitely known to increase the risk of developing breast cancer so if you drink alcohol please try to limit it because alcohol consumption is associated with increased risk of developing cancers so it is important to know what you're eating what you're drinking and also the cosmetics that you use something as innocuous as the skin cream you use or the lipstick you use could have chemicals like parabens in them which are not healthy for you so please try to go natural try to use natural substances and for young girls who are growing up in your family who are in the peripubertal age it is so important to teach them the importance of leading a healthy lifestyle the importance of self check once a month every month for every woman check your breasts with your hand so that if it ever happens you detect it in time and when you come to the doctor in time we can give you a guarantee of cure